Today we want to touch a very, very important subject, which is living in divine health, which is one of the most important things that God is dealing with us today, because we are entering into a time in which probably there's not going to be enough medicine in the world. And the Lord wants to take us to a higher level of understanding so each and every one of us can enter into this level of victory that was purchased in the cross of Calvary that actually has to do with our own salvation. Emerson, can you speak about a little bit about this salvation and healing and, and, div and divine health that you're so strong on it? Yeah, we, we spoke a little bit about how salvation was not only for our spirits, but also for our souls, and that our souls is where sickness is. Now, when Jesus came and said, your sins are forgiven to the man who was sick, we saw something very interesting happen. So, in the scripture of Luke, the fifth chapter, we see something uh, very interesting. They brought a man, starting in the 18th verse, they brought a, bed, brought a man in a bed who was paralyzed. They couldn't bring him in the front door, and when they could not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd, they went up to the housetop and let him down with his bed through the tiling in the midst before Jesus. Now, these men really wanted to get this person healed. There was something in these men that caused Jesus to say in verse 20, when he saw their faith, he said to him, man, your sins are forgiven. Now, isn't that curious? Here's a man who's sick and Jesus is dealing with his soul and spirit at the same time. He didn't say, man, get up from your bed, you're sick. He said, your sins are forgiven. Now, if you pay attention to that, you see that sickness is not a soulish thing to begin with, but it begins in our spirits. Whenever I used to be um, a salesperson, I remember that whenever I was tired, I was tired in my spirit first. I wasn't tired in my mind first. I was tired in my spirit so that my body felt tired because my spirit was tired. And it's the same way with sickness and sin. Sickness attaches itself to our spirit first, and then to our soul, and then to our body. So you can be sick in your spirit, it trespasses into your soul, and it trespasses into your body. Now we know that our body is the manifestation of what we think, believe in our minds. Your mind and your emotions and your will are all inside of our souls. So when Jesus is telling this man, your sins are forgiven, all the Pharisees in the room became very offended. But let's pick it up in verse 21 and see what happens. The scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus perceived their thoughts, and He answered, said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is it easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to rise up and walk? Now, do you see the consciousness of Christ in what Jesus is saying? He has so mastered his soul, his mind, his understanding of his spirit, that he says, what is it easier for me to do? To forgive your sins, or to tell you you're healed? Now, these Pharisees didn't understand that. And today, we're finding Christians that don't understand that because the Christians seem to be just as sick as the world, which is not what should be happening out there. No, absolutely not. I mean, Jesus died for our, took our, our infirmities. That's took right. every, in, in his wounds, he took every part of our sicknesses. So Christians, it is a testimony to the world that Christians should be Absolutely. walking in divine health. Absolutely. And then we will be an inspiration to the people. And you were saying something that is very interesting. How first you were feeling weak in your spirit and then that translated to your soul and then you started to feel sick. And I noticed as well that many people, because they have not submitted their emotions to the Holy Spirit, their emotion is a leading cause to bring sicknesses. And I noticed, by example, in my own personal case, that every time that I was sad 
or that I open up myself to be mad because of something, that was an open door that immediately caused a cold or, or, or some kind of uh, disturbance in my body because I open up in my soul to receive something that was not from God, such as sadness, such as irritation, such as, as being uh, mad with somebody. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it was until I put every, all these emotions under the submission of the Holy Spirit, and I said, the devil is not going to take over my soul. And when I did that, and I, and I had the opportunity of getting mad, I immediately started to have the control of my spirit over my soul and then over my body. And I think that if we are going to attain divine health, we need to exercise our senses. The Bible says having our senses exercised is how we grow to maturity. So I believe the Lord is telling us that we need to exercise. It's an exercise. I train my spirit to submit my emotions, to submit my thought life, and then as I submit my emotions, my character, my thought life into the spirit of the Lord, that gives, is going to give me a strength that now I can stand against every sickness. That's Am right. I correct? No, that's right. And here, here's a key to that, Anna. You know, in chapter 10 of Matthew, we should see something very important here. I think you've hit on something very critical. Jesus said in verse 1 of chapter 10 of Matthew, He called His twelve disciples and He gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases. Now Jesus gave them the authority. Mm -hmm. But the power came in Acts 1.8. That's where the, the authority came by Jesus, but the power came through the Holy Ghost. And in Acts 1.8 we see something that I'm talking about here that I think will and make a difference in, in what people understand about being filled with the Holy Spirit. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and then you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the other end of the earth. We've been told by so many theologies and so many pastors that when you come to the altar, and you recite a prayer of salvation, and then someone gets you to speak in tongues, that you are saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. And we're seeing that that same person, if that was true, would not be sick in his body, wouldn't be diseased. I have no problem telling someone that if you have entered into the kingdom of God in your spirit, then you will not be sick in your body. Because something happens in your spirit that the Holy Ghost changes the way you believe and receive God's power, that it absolutely affects your mind, it affects your soul, it affects your emotions, and it trespasses into your body. Mm -hmm. I, I, I learned from you that uh, there is like a, transfers, a, a transference of the Spirit of God and the power of God that goes from your spirit to your soul and to your body. Can you, can you tell us about that? Well, there was a, a man came to Jesus one time and asked him, what were the greatest commandments? And, and when I studied that, I saw something that the Lord revealed is much deeper than what we understand. In Mark, the 12th chapter, Jesus said, the first of all commandments in verse 29 is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like this, you shall love the neighbor as yourself. Now, the reason this is important to understand is because Jesus divides up the soul of man here. Mm -hmm. This is not a psychologist. This is Jesus that's dividing it up. He says, you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your body. So it's Jesus is the one that divides every, every part of our being up. You have a spirit, but unless that spirit is awakened through the heart. See, it says in Ezekiel that 
God replaces that stony heart with a heart of flesh mm -hmm. when that heart becomes sensitive mm -hmm. to God. Mm -hmm. Then that heart becomes a conduit for the spirit of man to awaken. That's when the redemption takes place. That's when the, the salvation begins to have its work throughout the being of man. Mm -hmm. Because we all want to love God. Mm -hmm. I think there's not a human being alive that doesn't want to know and love God. But because they don't know who God is and they have not seen God face to face because their hearts have not been touched, they can't see the Father. They can't recognize the Father. It says in Corinthians that there's a veil over our eyes. Paul says that they can't see the truth because they're veiled. But once that veil is opened and broken just a little, then you see the face of God. Then you're in, you absolutely fall in love with God. And then your heart trespasses by, trespassed by the Spirit allows that same power of God to enter into the soul. And in the soul is where all of our will is, where all of our emotions are, where we absolutely start to make our decisions in believing. I, actually, I'm seeing a picture that I think will help a lot of our, our audience it's like this is your spirit mm -hmm. that has been filled with God, now has all the power of salvation, all the power of healing that has penetrated your spirit, and this is your soul. Now what happens as you train your spirit and you submit your soul under the spirit, what is in your spirit, that victory that is in your spirit is going to start to overflow your soul. Mm -hmm. Right mm -hmm. now, when this, that is your soul, your mind, your heart, starts to be penetrated with all this divine thinking, I can be healed. I can walk in divine in divine health. I can be the victory of the cross, walking on earth, as a demonstrated power, in my own body. Then all this thought life, all these emotions that actually are line up with what Jesus did in the cross, now they trespass. Now let us think this is the body. Now all of this that has been permeated, all of this that has been enriched by the Spirit, now is going to pass to the body. And then the body is going to be healed. And that is, and that is what, what is so amazing about what well, you teach. And, and that's... And that's really true. But you see, here's something that's even deeper. You know, we're created as a triune being, mm -hmm. spirit, soul, and body. Mm -hmm. But the Godhead is also three. And the characteristics of the Father and the characteristics of the Son and the characteristics of the Holy Ghost are all different, but all one. Mm -hmm. That's why he says to love the Lord your God, who is one. Mm -hmm. So each one of the characteristics of the Godhead are designed to immerse those parts of our being. God the Father immerses our spirits. God the Son immerses our souls. God the Holy Spirit immerses our bodies. So when the power of the Holy Spirit controls your body, then you manifest the same believing, the same faith that Jesus walked in. You see, for so long, we haven't understood that we have been fragmented. One of, the, one of the worst things that happened in the garden was that the spirit of man was replaced by the soul of man. When Adam disobeyed God, he lost the dominion of his spirit to be in contact with God. He crowned the intellect of man because he chose to believe the being of this earth. He chose to believe the devil. He chose to believe the lie. He chose to believe that wisdom of this world was greater than the wisdom of God. So the spirit of man lost his dominion. It was now the soul of man became the place where believing takes place. Now this is so important to understand. Because I hear the word believe throughout the world, wherever we go. 
And I hear people say, I'm believing for my miracle. Brother, please pray for me. I've been believing for God to heal me. Did you know Jesus never used believing for anything in the future? When Jesus used believing in the King James Version, every other translation says faith. The King James Version is the only word translated believing. Every other word in every other translation we're believing is, is faith. Get hold of this. Jesus' Spirit, your spirit is where faith is, was connected to Jesus' soul. So when He used believe, it was the same as we use faith. They were connected. The power of believing was the same thing as His faith. It's not so for the average Christian. Because our believing, unless our spirit is dominating our soul, is still in our mind. It's almost like we're saying, I hope this comes to pass. I'm wishing for this to come to pass in the future. But that's not believing. Not according to the Scripture. Did you know there's two definitions for believing? One is trust and faith. The other is a desire for something to come to pass. And when we use believing as a desire for something to come to pass, it puts it in the future, and faith is now, according to the Scripture. It says, now is faith. It has nothing to do with the future. You see it. Jesus saw that thing. He saw that healing. He saw those lepers being healed. When He created the eyes for the blind men, He saw it. He pulled it out of the invisible and made it visible to that blind man. And for those that are suffering in your body, for those who have been so sick and have been saying the word, I'm believing for my healing, get the revelation of this. You can't use the word believing for something that you're expecting in the future. You have to use the word, now I receive what Jesus has already given me. If you talk about something in the future, you're not using faith. You're using the word that the world uses. And that's why you're having the same results as the world has. You're not living in the supernatural. You're not walking in that divine health. You're not living the life of the supernatural believer. Jesus came to show us that the supernatural is natural for those who are connected to the spirit realm. Jesus saw what His Father was doing and manifested in the natural realm. If you're not seeing heaven, if you're not seeing the kingdom of God, then you're not living in the kingdom of God and you're going to have the results of the kingdom of this world. The kingdom of this world lives in disease and death and destruction. That is what the devil came to bring through the first Adam. Jesus came to bring us a new experience. He says the experience that I'm going to give you is a heavenly one. It's a consciousness of seeing heaven and operating from that dimension. It's not some pie in the sky faith. It's reality. And the reason your reality is operating the way it is in your life is because your believing has not been connected to the supernatural Christ. Your mind your emotions have not gone through the transformation of living in your spirit. Your sickness and your disease is because you're attached to the mindset and the consciousness of this world. Jesus came to show us that unless you change your mind, unless you change your consciousness, consciousness is just a word that means you know what you know what you know. Jesus was speaking from what He knew. That's why all the Pharisees and Sadducees says, this man spake as one we never knew before. Because he was speaking heavenly things in a very unfamiliar way to the people on this earth. They weren't familiar with the things of the kingdom. He went about, he had to teach before he could preach. So he taught about the kingdom. What did he teach? He started with a uh, the chapter 5 of Matthew. People call it the Beatitudes. That's the principles of the kingdom. He set the foundation of the principles of the kingdom so that he could establish how the kingdom operated. And when people started to understand the kingdom where you have to be hungry for righteousness so you can be filled, you have to 
turn your cheek to someone who is, is hitting you. You have to love everyone. You have to be absolutely submitted to the principles of the kingdom in order to understand the consciousness of the kingdom. The consciousness of the kingdom means that these principles that Jesus outlined in the chapter 5 of Matthew are the foundational blocks where we can establish our trust and faith. If we're walking in the righteousness of those principles, the kingdom will come, just like Jesus prayed with His disciples. The kingdom will come. Be it on earth as it is in your kingdom. That kingdom comes inside of each and every one of us. That means sickness and disease can't stay. That means your life changes. That means your mindset changes. But you can't live in this world's kingdom and live in the kingdom of God at the same time. And so often we're seeing in churches where they're trying to blend the two. They're trying to give us psychological messages from this world and trying to make them sound so harmonious with the messages of Jesus. But that mixed message is creating doubt and unbelief in our minds. And we're having a hard time walking in the faith God has created for those who live in the kingdom of God. You can't live in both kingdoms. Emerson, you said something very, very important. If, you, if we live on the principles of Matthew 5, can, can you just remind us what are the, the principles of Matthew 5? I think it's a good thing to do. In Matthew 5, we see Jesus came to the mount and he spoke to the, the multitude, and he said in five chapter, chapter 5, verse 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And that I want to stop there and say something that's so important. You know, when Adam fell, the innocence and the purity of those two was gone. They were unable to see God. Their spirit had lost the purity, the innocence. And this scripture says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. One of the keys to seeing God is the righteousness of the kingdom entering into our hearts, trespassing into our souls, and moving all through our bodies to make a way for us to walk led by the Spirit of God. And actually what you're saying, all those principles, what they do, they, they break the soulish That's man right. That's right. and they start to lift up the spirit of That's man. That's exactly right. When you are merciful, when you are poor in spirit, when you give, um, when you turn your cheek, uh, when you are aggressive, when you follow all these this, this principles of righteousness, crying for righteousness, crying to be, to be merciful, then your spirit starts to develop. And then what is happening is that you're taking your eyes off, because if you analyze those principles, everything has to do with being unable to do something for somebody else. When I take the eyes of me in order to help somebody else, then my spirit is going to start to develop. Then I'm going to start to cry for the righteousness of God to come to the world. Then I'm going to start to cry, I mean, for those, for those that cry. Then I'm going to have the merciful. Then I'm going to purify my heart so I can see God. And all of this is going to take me into the kingdom. And as I train myself in the things of the Spirit, more and more my soul is going to be submitted under my spirit and I'm going to have dominion and I'm going to have control. And as these two manifest, then I'm going to see the results in my own body. That's exactly right. All we have to understand is that entering into the kingdom is the place where no sickness and disease can prosper. So we get focused, unfortunately, on I'm sick, I'm diseased, I have a need, but all we, we have forgotten the message Jesus preached where He says, repent and enter into the kingdom. Because we're, if you're in the kingdom, sickness and disease and death don't have a place to, to, to grab you. Mm -hmm. So instead of focusing on my disease and my sickness, enter into the kingdom 
and you walk in divine health. Now you're saying something very important, entering into the kingdom of God. And this is something that we need to, to, to specify what are we talking about. Because most people think that entering into the kingdom of God is making a, 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 a salvation prayer mm -hmm. and then go to a church. Mm -hmm. And then I am in the kingdom of God. No, entering into the kingdom of God is a spiritual reality. Entering into the kingdom of God is entering into the a dimension where everything is possible in the kingdom of God. It's a spiritual attitude and it's, a, and, and it's a, a soulish attitude that puts everything under God so I can penetrate and grab hold for what the Lord has gained for me in the cross of Calvary. Then in that attitude of the kingdom, I start to believe I can enter into divine health. I can enter into every victory that the Lord purchased for me in the cross. So the kingdom of God is actually a realm of the spirit. It's a realm where everything can happen. Right. It's a realm where that, but you need to switch. It's, it's about switching. And this is, this is uh, saying what you just said. It's, yeah. it's, uh, it's putting your mind not in hoping that something is going to happen in the future right. because that doesn't challenge you to enter into the place where you're going to possess That's right. what the Lord is giving you. That's right. But the moment you just uh, put your soul and says, this is not for the future, the Lord already healed me, the Lord already did this for me, and I start to put my thought life under the submission of the Spirit, and then I start to grab hold every, of everything that the Lord said for me. And I start to read the scripture in a different way. And I say, it is written that I am an overcomer. It is written that every sickness has been conquered. It is written that I am going to become the light of this world and I am going to become the manifestation of God Amen. in this world. Then when I read what is spoken in the Bible, about me, the level of, of health that I am to live in. Because if the Israelites lived for 400 years or 440 years in divine health, much more we can live now after Jesus died for our, for our sins. Absolutely. But it's because of lack of knowledge that my people perish. It's exactly right. Exactly right. People do not understand that the reality of their lives today is because of the substance that controls their minds. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If the substance inside of you is the result of more of the material of this world, in other words, if you're feasting on the things of this world, on the knowledge of this world, on the wisdom of this world, that's the substance that your soul and your mind capture. That's the substance that you draw from when you're in a situation that creates hardship and, and, and life-threatening situations in your life. You can't draw on a substance that's not inside of you. People say, you must trust God, you must trust God. Well, you're going to trust the substance that's on the inside of you first. And if you don't make it a point to make that substance the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, and the knowledge of His Word you won't have any foundation to grab. You won't have any substance to pull from. It's like the man that built his house on the sand. He didn't obey God. He didn't obey the words of Jesus. And Jesus said, that's like a man who built his house on the sand. And the man that obeys me, the man that hears my words, the man that does what I say to do, he's building his house on the rock. That rock, that revelation, that understanding, that substance of Christ the consciousness of Christ, the understanding that everything Jesus did was to create the sonship in us to reproduce. To reproduce. Now, that sounds so strange in most churches. Most churches says, you want me to be like Christ? Absolutely. That is our call. We're to be the sons of God. Jesus was the Son of God. We're to imitate. We're supposed to act just like Jesus. We're supposed to walk around with the same miracle ministry. We're supposed to have the same supernatural things happening in your life. Everything is possible for those who believe as Jesus. Now, there's a key thing here. Because the truth is that the soul tends to imitate Jesus. 
the soulish realm imitates Jesus. The spirit allows Jesus to operate through you, mm -hmm. which is different. One is I am trying in my own strength, in my own strength to become like Jesus, and other the other is I'm quieting my soul, I'm putting my soul under submission, and now I am going to allow Jesus, that is one spirit with me, to manifest through me. And as I allow in the spirit Jesus to manifest through my being, then I'm going to have the results, the character, and the life of Jesus manifesting in this world. Why, why don't we do a prayer for our beloved people that are watching this program and just, just pray that, that they can have this, this amazing understanding and development of their spirits. Pray for their spirits. Pray to, to guide them into this breakthrough for their own health. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to every person who has tuned in to this program, who for some reason, unbeknownst to you perhaps, you have been watching this, and something inside your spirit witnesses with the truth of God's Word. We're not about telling you who you are or what you're destined for. All we're going to tell you is the truth of what God says you are. God says you were created for a purpose. You have a spirit. You have a soul. And you live in a body. And if your body is racked with pain, if you're suffering, maybe you just came back from the doctor and you, you got a report that you have cancer. I'm here to tell you that it's a lie from the devil and that if you will believe Jesus and His Word, you will be healed. The same way the man who, who came down the roof, Jesus said, your sins are forgiven, get up from the bed and rise and walk. The same Jesus is saying to you, if you will believe me and you will repent of your sins and you will repent of not believing that I am the son of the living God and that I'm alive, that I've come to your life this hour, this day to give you life, then you will be healed. If you will believe that, if you will repent from your sins and you will allow the Holy Spirit to enter your, your spirit right now, He's calling you, He's asking you to release your life into the life of the kingdom. To release, release your will, your desires, everything that you have believed, release that into the knowledge of Christ right now and you will be set free. That is a guarantee for every human being. It's no different today than it was when Jesus walked the earth. He's talking to you right now and He's saying, trust me, believe me. My word is real and I'm alive and I'm interceding for you today, says the Lord. Amen.